In this video, you're going to learn how to solve rational equations. We're going to go through three examples together, see if you can do some of these on your own. And I want to show you an easy method that I found works for most students uh, to solve these real quickly and easily. What I like to do first is get a common denominator for all three of these fractions. So in order to do that, the first thing you want to do is factor the denominators as much as you can. So this one you can see is a difference of two squares. So it's going to factor as uh, x plus 1, x minus 1. If you need to review factoring, check out some of my Learn How to Factor videos. But when I look at all three of these fractions, I can see that this fraction has a denominator of x plus 1, x minus 1. This one only has an x plus 1. It really needs an x minus 1. So whatever I do to the denominator, I also have to do to the numerator because that's like multiplying by 1, which doesn't change the fraction, just changes the way that it looks. And this one over here, x minus 1, we really need another x plus 1. If I multiply the denominator by x plus 1, I want to do that to the numerator as well. Now you can see that we have a common denominator for all three of these, these fractions. And what we're going to do now is we're going to clear the denominators, meaning we're going to multiply this whole equation, both the left side and the right side, by this common denominator, which is x minus 1, x plus 1. You can think of this as being over 1. Now, if you were to distribute this to this fraction here, you can see that x minus 1, x plus 1 would cancel out this denominator. If you distribute it to this fraction here, you can see it's going to cancel out this denominator. And if you distribute it to this fraction here, cancels out this denominator. So what happens is you're clearing the denominators by multiplying through that equation by that common denominator. You're keeping the equation balanced because you're doing it to both the left and the right sides. And so then now what this uh, does, it makes it a lot easier to solve because we're just left with the numerator here, which is 2x plus 3x minus 3 equals 4x plus 4. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and solve. It's just like a normal uh, kind of easy algebra equation, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 4x from both sides, add 3 to both sides, and now you can see this is coming out to 1x is equal to 7. And what you want to do before you call it a day on that problem is you want to take that 7 and you want to go back and look at the denominators and see if it makes any of the denominators equal to 0. If it does, that's called an extraneous solution. It's a false answer and you would then say that there's no solution. But in this case, we just don't want the denominator, uh, the x value to come out to negative 1 or positive 1 because that would make the factors in the denominator equal to 0 and you can't divide by 0. That's undefined. In this case, 7, that's not going to make the denominator 0, so this is a good answer. Let's take a look at another example. See if you can do number two on your own. If I was going to do this, what I would do is I'd factor the denominators as much as I can first. This is a difference of two squares, x plus two times x minus two. This one, you can think of as a fraction by putting it over one, because anything divided by one is itself. So now when we look at all these denominators, we want to get a common denominator, right? So it looks like we've got an x plus 2, x minus 2. We only have an x plus 2 here, so that means we need an x minus 2. So I'll multiply that to the numerator and denominator. Here we're missing both an x plus 2 and an x minus 2. So we're going to have to multiply those both to the numerator and denominator. Now we can see that we have a common denominator for all three fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the left side and the right side by that common denominator, x plus 2 x minus 2. And you're keeping it balanced because you're doing it to both sides. I just like to think about it as multiplying the entire equation by that. And again, you can think of this as being over 1. So what happens when you multiply it to this fraction here, the x plus 2 and x minus 2 in the numerator cancel with the x plus 2, x minus 2 in the denominator. Same thing here, same thing here. So what ends up happening is we end up clearing the denominators, and that's a nice feeling, right? Just crossing out all those fractions. We just have to deal with the numerators now, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to simplify. We've got 4x minus 8. Okay, and then here, if we multiply these together, remember x plus 2 times x minus 2, that was this x squared minus 4. So I'm going to write this as x squared minus 4. And this minus 2, I'm going to think of as a negative 2 that I'm distributing into the parentheses there. So that's going to give us negative 2x squared plus 8 equals x. Okay, now we have a little bit simpler equation to work with, right? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything on one side of the equation and set it equal to zero. So if I do that, let's see, I've got, uh, let me add the negative 2x squared to the right, so that would give us positive 2x squared. Let me subtract the 4x, so 1x minus 4x is going to give us negative 3x. And then here we have negative 8 plus 8, which is actually 0. Those guys cancel. So now we've got everything on one side. We set it equal to 0, and we're going to factor. So the only thing we can really factor out here is a greatest common factor of x, which leaves us with 2x minus 3. When you have it in factored form like this, you can set each group equal to 0, each factor equal to 0. So x equals 0, and 2x minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides, and divide by 2. So you can see that x is coming out to 3 halves, or 0. Now what you want to do, but just like the previous problem, is you want to go back and you want to say, hmm, does that make my denominator equal to 0? Well, the only thing that would make the denominator 0 is if x was negative 2 or positive 2. That's not what we have here. So these are both uh, solutions to this equation. So great job. Let's take a look at one more example. Okay, if you're still with me here, I just wanted to mention that I've got a two video courses for sale, an Algebra 1 and an Algebra 2 video course for sale. So if you like the way that I explain things, check out those video courses in the description below. And let's do this last example. See if you can do it on your own. See if you can test yourself here. Uh, this one's a challenging one. If I was going to do it, the first thing, remember, is to factor the denominators as much as you can. So in this first one, you can see what multiplies to positive 15 but adds to negative 8. That's negative 5 and negative 3. Over here, it looks like this denominator is already factored. And then this one looks like we have a difference of two squares. So that's going to factor to x plus 3 times x minus 3. Okay, so now we have to get a common denominator for all three fractions, right? So it looks like we have an x minus 5 here, an x minus 5 here. We don't have an x minus 5 here. So let's go ahead and multiply the numerator and denominator by x minus 5. Over here we have an x minus 3. Here we have an x minus 3. This one doesn't have an x minus 3. So let's multiply the numerator and denominator here by x minus 3. And let's see what else. We're missing an x plus 3. We have an x plus 3 here. We don't have an x plus 3 here. So let's multiply the numerator and denominator by that. This one also doesn't have an x plus 3. So let's multiply the numerator and denominator by x plus 3. Now when we look, it looks like now we have a common denominator for all three fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear those denominators by multiplying through by our common denominator, which is the x plus 3, x minus 3, and x minus 5. And if we do that, remember this is over 1, and distribute to everything, left and right side, to keep that equation balanced. What that does is it clears the denominators. And we've got a much easier equation to solve. We just have these numerators. So let's go ahead and simplify the numerators here, what's left. We're going to do the distributive property twice, or FOIL, if you know that method. This is going to come out to x squared plus 3x plus 1x plus 3. Over here, x minus 3 times x plus 3 comes out to x squared minus 9. But you see this minus 1? This is like a negative 1 that I'm going to distribute. So that's going to come out to negative x squared plus 9, and then that's equal to x squared minus 5x. Okay, so now we've cleared the denominators. We just have what's left here from the numerators. We just have to solve this equation. So let's see what we have here. We have negative x squared and positive x squared. Those cancel. We have 3x plus 1x is 4x. 3 plus 9 is 12, and x squared minus 5x on the right side. So because I've got an x squared term and an x to the first term, what I'm going to do is get everything on one side of the equation and set it equal to 0. So let's go ahead and subtract the 4x and the 12 from both sides to keep it balanced. This is going to cancel. We're just going to be left with 0 equals x squared minus 9x minus 12. Okay, now that's interesting because what multiplies to negative 12 but adds to negative 9 well, there really isn't anything. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to do the quadratic formula or the completing the square, or you could graph it, any of the different methods to solve quadratic equations. I'll just do the quadratic formula. So we've got negative b, which would be the opposite of b, so that would be positive 9, 
plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's going to be negative 9 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 12, all divided by 2 times a, which is 1. Okay, so you know your quadratic formula. So this is going to come out to, let's see, 9 plus or minus the square root of 81 plus 48, all divided by 2. And let's simplify this down a little bit more. This comes out to 129, which I don't think can be simplified. Uh, I don't think there's any perfect squares you can pull out of there, is there? Well, let's see, 129, you could divide that by 3. Let's see. That's 43, but 43 is prime. So it looks like this is as far as you can go. And what we want to watch out for is that you can't divide by 0. So x couldn't be 5, 3, or negative 3 which this clearly is not. So that would be your final answer. So you got two solutions here. Great job. If you want some more examples, follow me over to that video right there where we talk about you know, solving more of these rational equations. I'll see you in that video.